and feminine in all, for we have the potential and possibility and capacity. So one of the things that is so much fun to be on the platform is that you, I get to take on, um, I'm channeling Reverend Robert, our Dr. Love, <laughs> because he arranged this beautiful guest speaker for us. And, and I'd like to uh, introduce Brother Luchan to us. He is one of those rare people who is in the 10%. That's a number I heard years ago. It may have changed. But you know that this teaching is a teaching of people who have converted from other religions and found us and felt they came home. Well, Brother Luchan has been home forever because he was raised in science of mind. And he is definitely uh, hailing from a, a legacy of powerful uh, ministers in the teaching. Since he grew up in the science of mind philosophy, he's hailing from a long line of science of mind practice practitioners and ministers. His grandmother is the Honorable Reverend Dr. Eloise Oliver, Minister Emerita of the East Bay Church in Oakland, California. And his uncle, Reverend Muada Rasuli, is the Senior Minister Spiritual Director at the San Francisco Center for Spiritual Living. In 2004, at the age of 23, Brother Luchan became the youngest practitioner to obtain their license which was such an honor. For three years, he served as the coordinator for youth and family at Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. Currently, Brother Luchan is enrolled in the Centers for Spiritual Living School of Spiritual Leadership, studying to become a licensed CSL minister. So let us welcome Brother Luchan to the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living, talking about so happy together. Welcome, welcome. You're here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> I always hope sometimes, like, okay, can they skip the part about who my family is? Because those are some big shoes to fill, but all right. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Yes, I did grow up in this philosophy. I remember growing up believing that my family actually made this thing up called science of mind because no one ever heard of it. Oftentimes at lunch, when I'd sit with my friends in the cafeteria and they'd say, oh, well, what church do you go to? And, oh, well, I go over here. And, oh, well, what church do you go to? Lucian and I'd be like, oh, here we go again. Because I knew I'd be the weird kid where they'd be science of mind, what is that? I literally thought my family just made this up. I mean, it's not far-fetched. We are from Berkeley where religion just get made up all the time. <laughs> and then I went to my first teen camp where I saw teens from Ukraine, teens from LA, teens from New York. We're all in this place together. Wait, you say and so it is also? Wait, your mother also makes you meditate? But I guess I'm home then. And that's when I finally realized how amazing our philosophy is. As Much as I love our philosophy, I won't pretend like I don't still have those days. And we all know what days I'm talking about, right? Those days where God is all there is, is the last thing you are trying to hear in that moment. We all have those days, right? I'm not the only one. Okay, thank you. I just need to know. There's, there's days where you do not want to hear that where this is literally a terrible day and someone has the nerve to say, well, you know, God is like, what did you just say to me? But no, 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 don't run. What did you just say to me? What we're talking about this month is so happy together. I heard that and really just had to take a moment and realize how beautiful it is to be alive and to have this human experience. But in those times where we are not so happy to be together, 
in those times where you're not so happy to know that God is all the world, in those difficult times to know this. We need those who can lift us out of the funk we are in. Now for me, music is truly medicine for me. I've never ever, growing up in this philosophy, I've never ever judged because of race, because of, because of gender, because of orientation. None of that has ever been an issue for me, but I will tell you, I'm just sorry. You have to have a good taste of music if you wanna be my friend, you just do. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you don't like Elton John, we're not gonna get along. If you don't like Stevie Wonder, it's just not gonna work, I'm sorry. Music is medicine for me. A DJ is more like a, a, a psychiatrist, in my opinion. A psychiatrist, just like a DJ, has to know the proper dose, the proper vibe to give you in order to get you going. And that's what a DJ does for me. And next would be a comedian. We don't give comedians enough credit, I believe. Comedians can lift us out of anything. Comedians can literally change our whole view of something that has been painting us forever. There is nothing a comedian can't make a joke about and help us see it in a different light. Laughter is healing, we know this. And the third person I'd like to bring up is the beautiful Reverend Robert Collins. I mean, do, do we really realize how spoiled we are here? I met Reverend Robert when there was no Reverend in front of his name. I met this man when he wasn't even a practitioner yet. Let me tell you something. Yes, he has always been this zen. He's always been this calm. He has always flashed that beautiful smile of his. Yes. Through his entire transformation, all this man has ever done is smile. And he has been through some battles, let me tell you. I have to remember people like him when I'm in those moods where nothing is funny to me and I don't want anybody telling me anything metaphysical. I remember people like Reverend Robert Collins. Our monthly theme is living everyday wonder and to play. Now that I'm a family man, I have to remember that I also get my turn to play too. You know, all my kids have devices. It's the most bizarre thing. And like, they don't even know what outside looks like. It's all, if I don't make them go outside, they won't. And all the outside things I wanna do, they make it seem like I'm Fred Flintstone. Like what, what is that, a basketball? It, no, dad, basketball's right here in the game. We don't, we don't have to do that anymore. It is important to play. We are here to literally enjoy this experience. That's really what we're here to do, nothing more. God is pure, raw, and uncut love. That's all God is. God wants us to be happy. Now, yes, there are those not so happy times, those, those dark moments in our lives that we will experience. But what I'm realizing is the game that God has sent us here to play is literally to have fun through all of it. I'm an 80s baby, so there was this book back in the day called Where's Waldo? I don't know if you remember it. Okay, there we go. I used to look at it so much I would get headaches. And we know the concept of where's Waldo. Um, every page you turn, you're looking for the character Waldo with his glasses and his cool little striped shirt. And as you're looking at the page, there's other distractions. You'll see something funny here. You'll see something scary over here. You'll see somebody who looks like Waldo, but he is not Waldo. And you're only supposed to just circle Waldo once you find him and turn the next page. That's it. And so explaining this to my son, I realized how our life is much like where's Waldo. See, every page we turn may be a new chapter, right? It may look as health concern in our life. It may look like what's going on with my family, Lord, please fix it. It may look like I'm ready for a, a, another shift in consciousness when it comes to abundance. It may look like all these challenges, but the game is always the same. There you are, God. Right there, you can't fool me. I see you right there, God. 
And let me tell you, at least for me, it is not always easy to remember the rules of the game. Sometimes I do get distracted. Sometimes I do get caught up in what's on this page right here instead of what I should be looking at right here. Sometimes I do that. But then I remember. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the scenery, enjoy what's around you, play. I was that kid who took things way too serious. Um, playing the dozens was not allowed in my family. And uh, for those who don't know, the dozens was when you and your friends get together and make fun of each other. We weren't allowed to do that in my family. You, you can get in a lot of trouble, but you know, growing up and not knowing how to play the dozens when you go to the, to the ball court, like that's a hard life. I didn't know how to talk bad about people. I just, why would I do that? And over time, I learned that, listen, kids are going to make fun of you regardless, bro. You either have to learn how to not let it affect you or you have to learn how to play the dozens, right? So it's a painful moment, but I can talk about it now. My grandmother has always said, if you can't laugh at it, you are not yet healed from it. My friends and I were going to a party in Alameda. We get to the party, nobody was there. So of course we, we're not driving yet. So now we're back on the bus. And what do you do when you're bored? Everybody starts playing the dozens. Yes, right there on the bus. And because everyone knew I didn't know how to play the dozens, I was the target. For I don't know how many stops, my friend did not leave me alone. I had these really dorky uh, um, cargo pants with a really big pocket on it. It's like, you don't even have any tools. Why is that pocket so huge, right? You can fit a whole hammer in there. For at least 20 stops, he kept talking about this pocket. What else you go pull out that pocket? Uh, look at that big old pocket. Everybody's in tears, even the bus driver. Hey, bus driver, you see his pocket? People getting on the bus. Hey, come here, come look at this pocket. I'm sitting here like, oh my goodness. Well, maybe if I just sit here and look pitiful enough, he'll get bored and talk about someone else. No, didn't work, not at all. I'm literally praying at this point, please spirit, make him leave me alone. And even spirit was like, how about you learn how to just tell some jokes? Stop taking yourself so serious. And that's when I allowed spirit to talk through me and to just have fun. It was in that moment I saw the healing power of this kind of movement. Every single thing we experience is a spiritual experience even something like your friends making fun of you. And over time since that day, I learned how to play the dozens. I even became a battle rapper at one time where you actually sign up for competitions to be made fun of by your opponent. I did that. Why would I do such a thing? Because I know that none of this is real anyway. We talk about oneness, but I believe one is not the real number. God is all there is, right? We all know that picture of the earth we all see. And we see that and we see oneness, that's earth, that's where we're all from. But understand that even everything around the earth, even behind the camera, the stuff we cannot see, that's all us too. Every part of our life is God, even the stuff we don't like. Maybe the number isn't one, maybe the number is zero. Maybe nothing exists because everything exists. All of it is God. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. Which means that all this around us is only temporary anyway. So why not make fun of it? Why not laugh through this entire experience? Something I think about when we talk about this subject, you know, a Black History Month just passed and oftentimes we talk about the trauma instead of a lot of the accomplishments. And what Dave Chappelle did for us, the way he healed our relationship with that one uniform we all know of, with the sheets and the, we all know what I'm talking about. He had his own show, the Dave Chappelle show, and season one, there was an episode where he did a really, really funny skit as a blind man who was part of the Klan, a blind black man who was part of the Klan. It was hilarious. And just in that skit alone, he totally remedied all the pain, all the embarrassment, all the hurt from that uniform. 
I used to look at that uniform and get angry. Now all I do is think about Dave Chappelle and that skit. He healed us literally with laughter. It's all funny. If I know that God is all there is, then why am I allowing the illusion to affect me? It's God. Let's just laugh together. Let's just know that we will be all right regardless. Take a time in your life where you thought of a difficult situation, where your entire world was crumbling in front of you. And look at you now. Look how beautiful, look how much wisdom, look how powerful you are from that situation. We always end up better than we were before anyway, so why not just laugh? Now, I must say, while I'm saying this, I'm only saying this so that y'all can tell me when it's my turn to get my lesson. That's really the only reason I'm saying this. There will be moments where I need you to remind me, and yes, I will not be that happy that you reminded me, but I will appreciate it later. Let's laugh. Let's play. There was a moment um, years ago, I had an audition in San Francisco. And if you know the history between Oakland and San Francisco, there were certain areas around this time that if you're from Oakland, you didn't get to go to if you weren't from San Francisco. And so the person, the, the director of this play told me, okay, well, he, didn't, he never told me the address for some reason, and you'll find out why. He only told me what bus to take and he just would lead me along the way. So finally I'm on the correct bus and I'm on that old weird looking Nokia we all had at one time. And I said, okay, I'm on the bus. Now, where do I get off at? I'm, I'm on third street. He said, okay, you're on third. All right, get off on Newcomb. Okay, third Newcomb. I'm screaming this by the way, on the bus. Everyone on the bus starts cracking up because they, they know what that means. And the little lady is knitting her little crochet and she's like, baby, what are you afraid of? I'm like third Newcomb off, that's the place that's always on the news. And you just, baby, you gotta stop paying attention to everything you hear, you'll be fine. Now, mind you, I'm dressed like I'm going to an audition, not dressed like I'm from third Newcomb. And I'm looking out the window and oh yeah, it's everything I thought. I mean, everyone's out and there's stuff going on and oh my goodness. And, and I finally realized what I have to do here, see? I could try to blend in and get off the bus and look tough, but come on now, y'all see me. Like somebody's gonna see right through it. You ain't tough, boy, stop. And we already know to get off the bus and look afraid, please don't do that. So I went within. And that's when spirit told me, just look like you belong here. Act like you would if you were at home. And so I step off the bus and I smile. I smile. And yes, I'm nervous. I'm praying the entire way to myself. And I'm walking straight to the door that I'm supposed to go to. And I mean, I'm hearing all things around me. You know, they're swearing, there's bottles breaking. I mean, I'm like, it almost feels like everyone is like, he's not from there, get him. And I keep smiling. And lo and behold, I had an amazing audition and I go to that area all the time. It's literally a file in the brain, a file in consciousness. Play. This doesn't mean that those things we're afraid of won't happen. It just means that it does not phase us anyway. We're here to grow. Let's enjoy ourselves. So happy together is what that reminds me of. See, I could have continued being afraid. I could have continued saying, oh, I'm not from here. No, every village is my village. And when I allow myself to be a part of the village, when I allow myself to be a part of the consciousness going on and be a healing presence rather than being an outsider, because the outsider consciousness exists in all of us, we can choose to use it or not. I decided in that moment, I am part of this village. This is how we fit into any situation. This is how we allow ourselves to have that positive experience. I don't have to be an outsider if I don't want to. I also realized something about life. I keep trying to look cool while I'm doing this. You know, trying to have joy, trying to have divine happiness, trying to have that smile where I don't care who's around. And what I'm realizing is that real joy does not look cool. It doesn't. 
You ever see when somebody wins the Olympics and they're crying and just, that ain't cool. Look at that face. That is not a beautiful face. I mean, it's beautiful spiritually, but come on. I mean, look at that. Remember when Shaquille O'Neal won his first ring? The biggest, scariest dude on the team crying like a baby. Yes, that is beautiful. That's what I want to see, but get it. That did not look cool. If I really want to get to that place of happiness where I feel free, where I feel one with God, I get to let go of this need to look cool. Stop being cool. Get off the wall and go on the dance floor and enjoy the party. Have you ever seen someone dance who cannot dance, but yet they do not care that they cannot dance? They don't care who's laughing at them. They, no one knows the joy that person feels until they try that. Literally dancing and everyone's laughing and you do not care because the joy you feel outweighs the laughter you are getting. I want that kind of courage. That's when we know we're doing it right. The person who can sit right there and just meditate whenever they feel like it in front of everyone. When my mom got back from Ghana, she said that people will literally just start dancing anywhere and people join in with them for whatever reason. You only got to know the person. The person will just start dancing at the supermarket, at, at court. It does not matter. People will join in because they know that is contagious and they want a piece of it. I don't know what you're feeling, but I want it. So I'm dancing with you. This is that so happy together I'm talking about. In honor of Women's History Month, I wanted to mention Sally Ride and Dr. Mae Jemison from NASA. We already know that being an astronaut is already hard. That's, that's a lot of accomplishments, but to be the only women in a, in a male dominated field, I mean, I have no idea what that took. But what I do know is that to be an astronaut, there's a lot of math and science and things involved that I really do not have the patience to be a part of. And so I look at that and I realize that while everyone else was going to parties, while everyone else was going to games, while everyone else was doing these things, these sisters were, were playing with numbers. I mean, literally playing with numbers. We don't experience greatness without the play. So when we look at someone like Steph Curry, who seems to can't even miss a shot if he tries, what I have to remember is he played with that ball all the time. What we're really looking at is someone who missed a million shots. That's what we saw first. Let's allow ourselves to play. Greatness comes from when we play first. Anything we're good at, it's because we've been playing at it for a while. Even the things I do not like. So when I'm like, why do I manifest the very thing I'm afraid of? Because you keep playing with the thought, homeboy. Stop playing with that thought, have a new thought, play with happiness, play with abundance, just play with it in your mind first. This is why I love our philosophy because it is literally compatible with every philosophy. Everything begins in the mind first, everything. Are we allowing ourselves to play first? Are we bringing that playful spirit to whatever we bring? I have seen the transformation in Reverend Robert. I have watched it. This man has laughed through life. It is beautiful. There was a moment, and he's known me since this, about this long ago. My mother had just scolded me for something, which I probably deserve to be scolded for. And he saw my attitude and I was angry and stomping around and have my lip out. And all he did, he literally just saw me and we made eye contact and he gave me a little chuckle and didn't say anything else. Now see, usually the men at this church would chastise me for having an attitude. You know, boy, you don't do that to your mother. And this, this, he didn't do any of that. He simply laughed and showed me how ridiculous I looked having my lip poked out the whole day. Man, 
Only person at church whose face is hurting is yours, young man. You can have fun if you want. We're all laughing. But if you are bent on having a bad day because of what your mom said, and even your mother's over there laughing now, then go ahead. And I had to look at myself. Wow, he's right. I'm the only one sitting here with my face all scrunched up. Everyone else is enjoying themselves. Love heals everything. Love is undefeated. Love, there is nothing tougher than love. Love has disarmed the most serious people. Love got me to walk through Hunter's Point in San Francisco and be untouched while I'm looking like an actor. Let us remember to allow ourselves to play, to have fun with this thing called life. You know those um, medication commercials we see on the late night, you know, do you have problems with this? And they never tell you what the pill does, but you know, they, you see people riding horses and running along on the beach. And what I realized in those commercials, they're not really selling us the medication. They're selling us the image of joy because they know that's what we all want. So we don't even know what the pill does and all, oh, they look like they're having fun. Let me go ahead and get one of those. Joy is that powerful. And so I ask myself, why do I allow myself to give my joy away? Anybody ever have that experience where you were literally having a good day and gave your joy away? There's no rule that says we have to get upset. There's no rule there. We, we don't really have to if we don't want to. We can literally say, oh, well, and continue with the party. It's not always easy, which is why I love that we have what we have, this beautiful community called CSL, because I constantly need reminders that, hey, not everything on the news is something I need to worry about. Not everything I heard this politician say is something I need to keep on my mind. Some days I can literally just go out and say, thank you, God, for this beautiful day. I can do that if I want. In the words of our good friend, Ernest, or Lay Holmes, the present moment can never provide us with more joy than we are able to embody. And that's when I got to remember that real joy is in the present. The past is gone forever and the future never comes anyway. There's this thing we do, a lot of MCs in the hip hop community call freestyling, which is pretty much when you're rapping and you don't have anything pre-written. It's a beautiful art, but what it really is, is just a prayer. It's the same thing as praying. We know that kind of prayer when the person just allows God to take over and they're not even there anymore. Something is talking through them. It's the same thing with freestyling. And it used to be terrifying whenever I'd be at a party and somebody would pass me the mic, like, go, go. I, I don't have anything written. I didn't rehearse this. But the truth is just start talking. Just have fun. Just let God use you. And all else will be taken care of. There was a show on YouTube for a while called uh, Roast Me. It's just like what it sounds, a bunch of guys just get together and they're all friends, you can tell, and it looks like a classroom setting. And they just roast each other playfully. They even have a disclaimer on there talking about, hey, we're not about bullying and we're about telling jokes on each other. And about season three, there was a new contestant and his name was Jay Wills. Jay Wills was wheelchair bound due to some complications that had he had at birth. And when he was first brought to the show, it was a beautiful story. Uh, his friend said, hey, I have a friend. And you know, when they finally saw him, they pulled her aside and say, hey, uh, you need to tell him that we're not about to be nice to him uh, on the show. Just, you know, we have a show to run. We can't be sympathetic. And she said, listen, when you hear the kind of jokes this guy tells, you're going to wish you were a little tighter. Okay. And unfortunately, he uh, later made his transition. But if you look 
at how beautiful he would just play off everyone and would tell his jokes and he was quick and no matter how much they kept, and eventually it made you not even want to hear any more wheelchair jokes. It's like, tell more than that. That's not bothering. He's been in that chair his whole life. You can't hurt his feelings with that. He just got enjoyment out of life. You could not hurt his feelings. And after he made his transition, it was the most beautiful thing. They made the announcement on the show. And before the show went off, one of his friends stopped and said, hold on, hold on. We are not going to leave on a sad note. He would not like that. And they all tell, started telling their favorite jokes about him and started telling their favorite jokes that he said to them. And it was beautiful. I mean, people were smiling with tears in their eyes. Let's have fun with life again. Let's show God, let's show the universe how much we appreciate this gift of life we've been given by just simply laughing through it all, through even those dark moments where we don't know what's gonna happen. At this point, we realize what always ends up happening is us being greater and more beautiful than ever. Let's get back to that again. Monterey, thank you so much for having me. I feel at home and let me tell you, I came here nervous. I came here like, okay, this is my mentor's church. And then I saw the beautiful building. I'm like, okay, this is my mentor's church in a huge, beautiful building. And then I felt the vibe of all of you when I came in here and I knew I was at home. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for welcoming me home. Namaste. And so now in this moment, as we allow the, uh, prayers, prayer requests. We know that every prayer that we have in the box, outside the box, in this community, outside the community, we know that it is already answered for God only says yes. I speak my word right now that we allow ourselves to play. For we know this thing called life is our playground. We enjoy the slide, we enjoy the swing, we enjoy the sandbox. We are simply playing through life like we were supposed to right now. We stay in the present loving every millisecond, knowing that it is a gift and we cherish it. We laugh, we laugh through tears, we laugh through pain, we laugh through hurt. We simply laugh for it is our greatest asset. I bless this service, I bless this congregation, I bless these walls, I bless this building, I bless this entire city. I am giving thanks for the abundance that God gives us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I release this to the universal law where the answer is always yes. Well, my word is power. I take my hands off it and I allow it to be. So it is. Thank you. Blessing, love you. not allowing anyone to disturb your sense of wonder and joy. And this teaching does that, yeah? It transforms your experience of life. So I, I wanted to um, thank Brother Lucian from the bottom of my heart for being here. Your energy, your presence, your stories, they are memorable and heartfelt. And I will remember, I will remember. And I'm gonna go look up some of those uh, references on uh, YouTube and the networks. 
<laughs> so one of the things that uh, I know is prayer, prayer tra transforms lives. It changes things. If you are dealing with anything in your life where you feel you have a heavy heart, something is burdening you, see a practitioner or put in a prayer request in the prayer request chest or meet with a practitioner for a private session. And you can always go to the World Ministry of Prayer at csl.org and uh, use a prayer practitioner on that team, which is universally serviced by the world, practitioner volunteers. One of the things we get to do in this life besides laugh and breathe, which are all ways of inhaling and exhaling, right? We are circulating life with every breath we take. We also get to circulate our good through uh, demonstrations of prosperity and abundance and through giving. So I'd invite you to um, consider some different ways to give and receive in this community, not only with our money, but with our time, our talents, or something that spirit is urging you to do, like volunteering perhaps in some way. So with that, we'll go to our abundance slide where I'd invite you all to say with me our abundance statement. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And of course, there's many ways to give. For those in the sanctuary, checks and cash are always welcome. You can put them in the box on our glass uh, reception table. You can send your donations in through the donate button on our website, text to give through the phone, um, or um, mail in a donation. The references are listed on your screen. And know that this church has a high prosperity consciousness. We have a beautiful 100-year-old building filled with love and abundance, and it is unmortgaged, owned debt-free, <clears throat> and our contributions help maintain the structure. But more importantly, there is outreach into our community through spiritual tithing and giving back. So know that your donations are tithed on by our leadership team to selected organizations that help the wider uh, world. Um, firefighter organization in Denver or the food bank or um, the gathering for women, for the homeless women. They're just a few of the examples of <clears throat> how our community supports outreach. So at this time, one of the things that we always do is we invite anyone in our virtual or in-person community to share a demonstration or what? Oh, bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye Facebook. I forgot about that. Yes, we have a virtual community and you can actually experience us through asynchronous going to Facebook, CSL, Monterey CSL, and hearing prior talks or the current talk, you don't even have to be at church on Sunday. So next week, I'd invite you all to come back, virtual community. And our April theme is creativity, something that is an absolutely fun, fun topic. And um, see us on Sunday next week. <laughs>